What's it like seeing the Lions name in the NFC Championship and kind of the turnaround that they've had? No, I mean, it's great. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy for their franchise. Uh, you always want everyone to win unless they're your opponent. So uh, obviously we got to get in here and handle business. As a, as a lineman that protects for, for Brock Purdy and there's a lot of national narrative, maybe some slander towards him, does that fire you up and kind of make you mad? I honestly don't even know half okay. of that stuff that's going on, to be honest. I try and stay off the internet and all the news sources <laughs> as much as I can during the season. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we all know who he is in this room and who, who he is on this team. And anyone outside of here, I, I mean, it's not really taken too too seriously. Well, it might be a no because you just said you stay off the internet. But, like, <laughs> have you ever seen the Dan Campbell stuff, biting kneecaps, he drinks, like, a ridiculous amount of coffee? Like, are you familiar with sort of his style? A little bit, right? Like, he's an ex-player, and that just sort of comes with uh, territory, I think, a little bit, um, especially when he was playing. I mean, he, he definitely played in a different era of football. What kind of difference do you see in a coach who also was a player versus maybe a guy that didn't play? Um... Really, it's just the lens that he looks through. Um, guys who have played, I mean, I've, 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 I've had it both ways. I've had player coaches and I've had coaches that really haven't played past high school or college. And really, it just comes down to the lens that they have and just kind of how they see football. Um, there's a lot of coaches that see it as a business, a lot of coaches that see it as uh, X's and O's and that sort of thing on paper. And there's also a lot of coaches that have that uh, emotional side as well that, you know, players have. So... It is, it is kind of nice to have a balance of both. Jawan Jennings blocked a Green Bay Packer into the, into the Gatorade. Buckets. Yeah, I saw yeah, that. I mean, like, what's yeah. that like as a lineman? Like, do you feel like he's kind of like one of us? And that's, I mean, all these wide receivers block, but Jawan really yeah. gets after it. No, I mean, every single receiver on this team blocks. They, if they don't, they're not on the team. <laughs> so, um, you know, we really take pride in that on this offense. Every single person has to do their job. If that's, a, you know, digging out a safety and the C or D gap, then that's what they got to do. Um, and Jawan embodies that mentality that's awesome to see how much fun is it to block for christian mccaffrey because he give him a little bit he can go yeah i mean i i've, I've said this probably a hundred times now he's arguably the best scat back in the league he's so versatile um and he's just such a weapon on different fronts where you know you can really do whatever you want with the guy so um having him on your side of the ball is sweet um, really, his just his decisiveness, right? The fact that he's so assertive in the in uh, the huddle, he commands our attention. And he does a great job of getting ev everyone on you know the right page and uh, make sure that we're doing the right things. Um, you know, I feel like his execution too has been great. You still for a 24 year old beginning? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you really don't see young guys doing that, especially guys that aren't drafted in the first round or second round or whatever. But you know, I feel like he's done a really great job of just um, you know, doing his part. Do you recall him, um, sorry, do you recall um, Trent speaking up um, before that final drive and, and saying, now's the time, we've got a better score here? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we all knew exactly what the deal was. Um, our our offense was kind of hot and cold a little bit throughout the entire game, and we knew that we just had to handle business. We had to eat a lot of the clock up, and we had to get first downs, um, and that's what we did. We went out there and got, you know, you know, the crucial, consistent offensive play that we, you know, that we've been seeing from this offense for the whole season, and we just had to go out there and make sure we had one more score. Is that unusual for him to, to speak? I mean, how how often does that happen that one guy sort of talk to the huddle? No, I mean he speaks when he needs to speak. You know, he's uh. You know, he's a vocal leader. He's also a very physical leader. He leads by example every single day, but he also, you know, when we need or when he thinks we need to hear something, he'll definitely say something. I noticed on the 49ers post that I mic'd up of the game, and you were very vocal before the game uh, in firing up the offensive line. Is that something that you've kind of embraced, a little bit more of a vocal leadership role before games? So we don't normally have access to, to that, so it's the first time I saw that for me. Yeah, I mean, a little bit. Um, you know, ever since I signed this contract, I, I feel like I have a little bit more own, ownership on the, at, you know, at least the offensive side of the ball. Um, and yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, it's not really an emotional game for me. It's more of just, uh, hey, you need to get your job done. But at the same time, I feel like there is something to be said before a game and to your guys, because it is a team effort, especially an offensive line, making sure that, you know, we all know exactly what we're doing on that day. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate Thanks. it. Good luck.